My name is Alec Dick. I'm the Hepco Motion Business Development Manager. Um, I've been with the company for over 17 years now, and uh, I have over 30 years of experience in mechanical engineering. So today we're going to be talking about Hepco's um, V Guide system. Okay, so today we're going to look at um, firstly Hepco Motion, who we are, what we do, and where we are as well, importantly. And V-Guide technology, it's something you may be familiar with, maybe not, but so why use it? You know, what, what are the benefits in V-Guide technology and how will it help your business? And the features surrounding those benefits, so V-Guide performance, maintenance, uh, and how, how does your linear guide fail? What's the, the failure mode? Um, tolerance, system tolerance, uh, not just harsh conditions, but also the tolerance to installation. And then clever design, the design options, the flexibility that gives you with your, um, with your concepts. And then finally, I'm going to open up the floor to your questions. So I welcome your, your questions. Please put them in the question modules. Uh, the module which uh, you, you'll see in the, the Zoom controls. Um, I'll get to those at the end of the presentation and we'll go through those. So once again, thank you very much for your time and we will press on. So HEPCO motion, uh, what do we do? So predominantly linear motion components. We're a European manufacturer of linear and circular slide systems. So our product range is extensive with over 45 mechanical motion products in our portfolio. And at the core of our range is V technology, which was pioneered by Hepcomotion over 50 years ago. We're continuously evolving our technology, and this has led to an ever greater demand for our products. Currently, we supply over 60,000 meters of track per year. Our sales and technical teams are supporting our customers with over 4,000 projects a year. So Hepcomotion is a family owned and run company with 425 employees working for our customers all over the world. Our manufacturing plants are split over four sites, three in Europe, one in Asia. Hepcomotion has three manufacturing sites in the UK. Tiverton in Devon is the location of our HQ, a main manufacturing facility. Our bearing plant is situated in Braintree, Essex. And we also have HEPCO Automation, a facility for providing our UK customers with complete turnkey solutions built around our range of motion products. So we have branch offices in the UK, Germany, France, Benelux and Spain, each with our own dedicated team of sales engineers providing direct application to support to you and our customers. In Asia, South Korea, we have another manufacturing facility supporting many of the technology driven industries in this part of the world. So namely electronics, automotive and EV manufacturer to name but a few. We also have dedicated teams of field sales engineers working from our offices in South Korea, China and India. So as the demand for HEPCO's industry leading technology has grown across the globe, we've expanded our reach with trusted, respected partner companies, meaning that our products are available now in over 48 countries. So manufacturing, science and technology are core to virtually all industries. And where there is a need for motion, there's the opportunity for HEPCO's products to provide solutions probably easier to tell the industries we're not involved in rather than those we are. But a few key examples of where our products are used include packaging, food production, electronics and pharmaceutical. So why will HEPCO's V-Guide technology save you time and money? After all, that's the big hook, the big question. And of course, we recognise there are other technologies out there, some that even look very similar. So I'm going to run through the strengths of our V-Guide technology and the quality that really sets us apart. So we're going to consider three key benefits 
that surround our V-Guide technology. And the first one we're going to look at is productivity. How will a V-system improve your throughput? So we're going to focus on three main features, the first of which is speed. So speed, clearly it's fundamental to throughput. Goes without saying, the faster you can get your product through a line, the more product you're going to produce. The example we're looking at now is for a HEPCO GFX system that has capacity for up to 180 parts per minute. And really this is impossible without a high operating speed. And of course, speed is only part of the equation. With increased speed comes increased distance. Therefore, the system not only needs to be high performance, but also highly durable, an area where the V system really excels. So what are we talking about in raw numbers? Well, a V system is capable of speeds in excess of 10 meters per second, or in other terms, 36 kilometers per hour. So it's not hanging around. So combined with acceleration figures of three to four Gs, we're looking at a very dynamic system capable of exceeding alternative technologies. So higher speeds clearly equals a higher throughput, which means increased productivity. A V-guide system is capable of around 10 meters per second. Recirculating technology such as ball rails or ball bushings are typically limited to three or four meters per second. And uh, why is there this, this big difference? Okay, so it, it's all gonna get a bit sciencey now, but please bear with me. Um, and this is fundamentally down to Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. So recirculating bearing designs experience a high degree of acceleration change between the, the load bearing track and the return track. So as it, it goes around that, that loop to return. And ultimately this causes very high forces to be applied to the end caps of the bearing, which are responsible for guiding the balls into that return track. So the combination of the high force and end cap material really limits the rate at which the bearing block or bush can travel. Conversely, a V bearing system, it's got a uniform acceleration due to its circular design. The balls are captivated between highly durable, hardened steel, inner and outer raceways. To put it in relatable terms, think about driving your car around a long, hair, a sharp hairpin bend, as opposed to a long sweeping bend. Think of the forces you experience in both those scenarios. And that's much the same as to what's happening to the balls within the innards of those bearings. So looking back at our key benefit of increased productivity, we can see that speed is fundamental to achieving this. And V technology really offers a significant advantage in this area. Indeed, we're seeing our products used extensively with linear motors for exactly this reason. And the next feature we're going to look at surrounding productivity is maintenance. So one of the key features of HEPCO, HEPCO's V-Guide linear system is the facility to be able to adjust the eccentric bearings. This means that after many thousands of kilometers of travel, when a small amount of play develops into the slide system, it can effectively be reset back to its original factory preload. Certainly this is a feature that's not possible with alternative recirculating technology. If you get play into a, a ball rail system, then effectively that has to be taken out and thrown away. So the key message, readjust, don't throw away. The eccentric journals give that carriage adjustment. And typically over its lifetime, you may be able to readjust that system two, three, or even four times during its overall system life. The recirculating linear guides, they require a complete replacement. You can't just change the block when a bit of play comes in because invariably the wear has occurred to both the internal runners on the block and also the running raceways on the rail as well. There's no means of adjustment. 
So the HEPCO V system, it incorporates various lubrication solutions. We've got cap seals, which will fit over the bearings and allow the, the bearing to be charged with grease. It'll give you about a thousand kilometers of, of running before you touch it again. And lubricator devices, which run directly on the slides. Um, but if you want a really fit and forget solution, we can offer a bleed lubrication um, option, which ports directly into the slide that can be piped up to an automated dosing system. So really you never have to touch it. So V-Guide maintenance means that the system can be adjusted as opposed to complete replacement. And undoubtedly the adjustment process takes far less time, therefore meaning the machine is operational for a higher percentage of time, which ultimately means higher productivity. So moving further down the line, and looking at end of life scenarios. You've got to consider the failure mode and how is this going to affect your productivity? So I think you'll all agree that the worst case scenario is where everything literally comes to a grinding halt, possibly with some quite spectacular effects. So what is catastrophic failure? It's a sudden and total failure that's irrecoverable. Sounds pretty bad. What effect does this have on your production line? Ask yourself that question. So why does recirculating technology have this limitation? Well, as we looked at in the, in the speed, the, the balls are running around inside the end cap. The end cap material is generally a sort of plastic type of material. And as the, the the system comes to its end of life, the, all of the stress that's gone through that end cap, it, it causes uh, wear and ultimately failure of this end cap. And it results either with the, with the balls pushing through the end cap or the end cap coming away completely. Once the, that end cap is gone, there's nothing to retain those balls. So the balls come out at the end of the block and invariably you've got metal on metal on the rail and it literally will not move. Once those balls have gone, there's nothing, no bearing technology going on anymore. So, and conversely, why doesn't the V-Guide technology fail in the same way? So we've looked at the construction of the V-bearing and we, we've mentioned the fact that the balls are captivated between those hardened raceways, an inner and an outer raceway. The bearing is sealed for life, okay? This isn't the running surface. So when some wear builds into the system, you will get some um, a bit of play in the bearing. It will be noticeable. The carriage will start to move and you can feel it on the bearing. And quite often you'll get noise as well. So you've got a warning. And this is a gradual process. It happens over a long period of time. So you don't get that sudden um, going from working to not working. You've got a really long period where this wear is taking place. So it's very much a, uh, a gentler process. Um, and, you know, we've got to consider what does this mean in the real world? So let's take this application for an example. It's a food packaging process. And for this particular application, it's using a DLS4, which is using a V-Guide v system. But say it was using a recirculating ball rail. So it completes a stroke of 300 millimeters in quarter of a second. This is operating 16 hours a day, seven days a week. So the output is one product every 1.2 seconds, which equals 3000 parts an hour. Imagine a catastrophic failure where not only is the system completely taken offline for a few hours to repair, and this assumes that you've got the spare parts to hand, but also there's a strong chance that the ejected matter from this linear bearing has contaminated the product. So we talked about the balls ejecting from the ball rail. What happens to those balls in this instance? Okay, they've probably dropped down and, and gone into your, your bowls of salad. Okay, so we are looking at potentially a three hour breakdown and that would cost 9,000 parts. Plus, you've got the risk of scrapping the entire batch due to balls in your salad. 
which is a scary thought. And in this particular application, the customer is using a HEPCO v, v guide system. So it really allows them to run quite literally millions of cycles with the confidence that this system will not catastrophically fail. They'll get those warnings. They might get a bit of play in the system or it might get a bit noisy. But ultimately, it's not going to suddenly grind to halt with a sudden bang. So to summarise um, the, the features around the key benefit of productivity, speed clearly means more parts per minute. The minimal maintenance means a reduced maintenance programme. Okay, means your machine is running for longer, therefore it's outputting more product. The fact that it will not catastrophically fail means you've got no unexpected surprises. Um, and you don't have to build in maybe as frequent planned preventative maintenance. Again, this means the machine is running for longer and it's producing more. OK, so now that we've looked at the key features of increased productivity, we're going to look at the next significant benefit, which is the cost saving that a V-Guide solution can bring to an application. So we've already touched on maintenance and of course this feature has a crossover to the cost it can save during the life cycle of the machine. The adjustability of the eccentric bearings allows for repeated resetting as a opposed to a replacement. Being able to adjust means that money is saved not only the material cost of the components but also the cost associated with downtime and maintenance hours. And significantly another feature that saves money is the ease of installation. And the V-system by its very nature is very tolerant. Okay, the bearings have a small um, axial float within them and it allows for V-systems to be mounted in parallel. Um, and the, the, because you've got this small amount of um, tolerance, it, will, it won't bind and, and fight against each other and cause additional load. But beyond this, we've got additional options which allow for greater tolerances, including floating bearings and flat tracks. Does not require uh, machining mounting surfaces. So these options really allow for installation, even with welded fabrication tolerances, which, as we all appreciate, are quite wide. So the compliance is integral to the design. So you're, if you're running on a slightly imperfect surface, the, the four points of contact of the four bearings will allow for slight misdemeanors in your mounting surface. Pretty much most surfaces are okay for a V-guide system. So you could take a length of um, steel box section, for instance. And you don't need to specially prepare the surface. You don't need to machine it flat because there's enough, again, enough tolerance within the bearing system. The additional design options really allow for expanded tolerances. And ultimately, this means that your setup time is quicker and therefore more cost effective. So with built-in compliance and options that extend this capability further, time and therefore money is saved not only on the installation but also design and it's so easy to overlook design costs but literally why spend money on reinventing the wheel so moving on to to system tolerance and we really do love a challenge and this is one area where the v system excels above all other technologies sure we can do nice and easy clean and dry environments but when the going gets tough, the V system really steps up. Throw what you will at a V system, dust, swarf, wash down operations, even glass. There really is no better solution for keeping things moving in challenging environments. Another inherent feature in V-Guide systems is its self-cleaning ability. The difference in diameter between the inner and outer of the V profile in the bearing results in a peripheral speed that increases as you go towards the outer edge of the V. 
the effect of this speed differential pushes the dirt and dust to the outside, outside edge of the bearing, effectively wiping the flanks of the V-clean as the bearing passes over the slide. Put in another, um, inst another example, think about sitting in your car in a hailstorm. You've got your windscreen wipers going and it will push those hailstones towards the outer edge of the wiper where you've got a, a greater amount of speed, much the same sort of um, manner or principle. I may have used a bit of artistic license there, but you get my drift. So let's look at a real life application. This one is using HEPCO's GV3B system for linear guidance of the reed on a carpet weaving machine. And clearly this is a, a dirty environment with plenty of dust and flock in the atmosphere. In this instance, the V bearings are housed in capsule devices, which provide lubrication to the system and also aid with the wiping function. As a result, this particular application has been operating for over 10 years without a single breakdown of the linear guide system. Pretty impressive. So we've established a bit of fluff is no problem, but let's step things up a bit. How about slate processing? And the cutting and grinding of slate is probably as harsh as it gets. It's a fine abrasive dust that literally gets everywhere. And indeed this system was originally designed with the recirculating linear guides. However, due to the aggressive environment, these guides were only lasting about four months before they needed changing. The system was refitted with HEPCO's GV3 V guide systems, and it now gives over four years of life in what is a clearly a very challenging environment. So in this instance, the application runs without lubrication on the slides, and this prevents the abrasive dust mixing with the grease to form, uh, to, to form a damaging grinding paste. And again, this is really a key differentiator. In right application, dry running is possible. However, we do strongly recommend that you check your application with our technical team first. So looking at the key benefit of cost saving, minimal maintenance means reduced maintenance costs. The ease of installation equals less cost involved for design and manufacture and installation, of course. And the system tolerance, tolerance to harsh conditions, means that you've got less frequent replacement and therefore less expense. So cost saving, time saving, there are understandably benefits that really go hand in hand in many cases and share some common features. Reduced maintenance equals less time spent by our engineers on preventative or corrective maintenance. The ease of installation clearly saves time for both the design and the assembly processes. But additionally, the design options available can have or provide significant time savings. So we'll look at those next. The core V-Guide principle runs through many of our products and provides guidance for applications ranging from shuttling microchips into vacuum chambers to the pick and place of heavy racks of bread. So if you've got a specific application that is based around product handling, assembly, processing, pretty much any sort of motion, uh, there will invariably be a V-Guide system that will suit your needs. And our strength as a manufacturer allows us to adapt to the needs of our customers. And we've developed many innovative solutions to solve our customers' problems. For instance, special stainless, all stainless steel bearings suited to clean room and extreme temperature applications. Removable carriages that allow vertical removal from the slide as opposed to having to run it off the end. This is fundamentally important if you have linear guides that are running between machine bulkheads. It can save you all the time of removing you know, the end of a machine to do your, your maintenance. We've got integral rack drives mounted to your V-slides, taking away the need to design, install and align relative 
to the guide system. And of course, our ring and track combinations offer unparalleled flexibility in machine design. Why reciprocate when maybe you can go in a continuous motion using one of HEPCO's many designs of driven and undriven track systems? So another key benefit of being a world-class manufacturer is that we're able to offer extensive customization to our products. Customized carriage plates to suit your tooling requirements, special surface finishes, non-standard mounting holes, non-catalog ring diameters, and so on and so on. The things we get asked for, uh, different things all the time, but it can really save you time in your design and installation. But additionally, we can also offer bespoke mechanical system designs. So much of the legwork is taken out of realizing your concepts so we can put together multiple parts of our product range together as a full mechanical system. So we, we've, we've looked at the fact that design flexibility, it, it really can save you time during your machine concept and design to minimize the additional drive elements or simply reduce the time needed to access critical components for maintenance or line changes. So there we have it, three key reasons of why HEPCO's V system can benefit your business by increasing productivity, reducing cost and saving time. But of course, this is really only scratching the surface. As I've already touched on, HECO's range is extensive, offering solutions for applications carrying only a few kilograms up to hundreds of kilograms. So looking at the products themselves, GV3 is our core product, offering many different slide specifications and numerous design options from manual locking devices to integral racks. Simple Select, is a complementary range providing the quickest ship time of any of our products. SL2 provides a stainless steel linear V-guide solution suited to our applications such as food, pharmaceutical and electronics manufacture. Bishop Wisecarver dual V and utility track products offer further design options based around single edge V and channel based technology. Or for high payload applications, HEPCO's HDS2 can be assembled, for instance, into multi-axis gantry systems. And we have a varied range of modular driven systems with options on driving method, methods such as belt or screw. And V systems, of course, aren't restricted to just straight lines. Our ring and track systems offer a huge array of options on slides, bearing sizes and ring diameters. HEPCO's patented one track design has proven its ultimate flexibility, not least in contributing to the cutting edge GFX track system, an innovative track system that really enhances the mechanical capabilities of Beckhoff's XTS system. Again, we're really only scratching the surface of our ring and track solutions, and we will save this for a future webinar. So half an hour is really not much time uh, and we've really only just touched on the potential of the V-Guide systems. But here are a few more key points that you may want to consider um, HEPCO's V-Technology for. So the V-Guide design can allow for six wheel carriages that can traverse gaps. 100 millimetres of free air is quite feasible. And with at least four bearings in contact with the slide, there's, there's no loss of stability. You've always got that preload. Equally, it's very easy to butt tracks together for theoretically limitless lengths. And it goes without saying the HEPCO product is of the highest quality. We only use premium grade materials and our hardening processes have been refined to a fine art over the past 50 years. A freedom of configuration has allowed for some truly innovative designs, systems with carriages traversing multiple guides on different levels. So why build out when you can go up? Think of the difference that could make to your valuable factory floor space. And noise 
is another aspect that can be easily forgotten in machine design. HEPCO's low friction V systems are incredibly smooth and quiet. And indeed, one of our claims to fame is being used on the camera gear that captured the impressive panoramic shots in the recent Star Wars movies. So to summarize what I've shown you today, HEPCO's V systems are well suited to long, fast and dirty applications. Long butted lengths, integral racks, flexible installation options, removing the need for expensive and fussy setups. So I ask you to please consider all of these points when you're looking at your next project, as the true return of investment is rarely at face value. But of course, I can't finish without mentioning HEPCO's biggest asset, our people. Our sales teams, both internal and external, applications engineers, production quality, and R&D teams amongst others are all working to provide you with the support you need for your projects. We're market leaders in offering technical support for your projects, whether it be our product knowledge, extensive application experience, or detailed load life calculations, you can be sure that we will specify you the best solution. So that's, uh, that's, that's me doing my bit. I've um, um, shown you all I, I want to today. So thank you very much um, for your time. And I'm gonna open up the floor to your questions. So we had a question um, from Sammy uh, in Spain. So asking about um, water and paint splashing on the, on the Vs of a DLS system. So um, the, the, the V system as we looked at earlier in the presentation is extremely good in dirty, harsh conditions. Uh, if there's water involved, then you'll need to use a stainless steel guide. Uh, that, that's a standard option within the DLS range. As for paint getting on the system, what you will find is that the, the V bearing and the, the white wiping action, it will actually clean that paint on the running surfaces. Now, depending on the amount of paint that you've got going on there, you might may find that that will, will mix and discolor your grease, but it won't cause a problem. So certainly that's an application that we have done, uh, we've, we've done before. Prycash uh, asks, um, what, whether a similar series of HEPCO can be used in furnace environments. So for an auto ladle or auto pouring of molten metal and what kind of effect the heat will have on the bearings. Okay, that's a, a very good question. Um, so uh, heat is, is an area is very challenging. We do have high and low temperature um, bearing options but the, the, the ultimate ambient temperature that they can cope with is up to 250 degrees. So really, if, if, you, uh, if it's gonna be higher than that, you will need to share um, shield the bearing system. Um, the slide can potentially go a little bit higher, but you have to be careful because you can get to a, a stage where the, um, uh, the, the hardness can be affected. So it's, it's, it's really quite a challenging environment. Okay, Anton Hermans. So are there hygienic versions of the V-Guide system? So there are no socket screws used and there are no holes where water can stand still. A uh, good question. So um, in terms of, of sort of food um, and sort of scientific pharmaceutical applications, our SL2 stainless steel product is generally used. The, the slide itself is supplied with blanking plugs, which can be fit, fitted into the mounting holes of the slides. Also, the carriages themselves have blanking plugs to try and reduce all of those, those traps. Um, I mean, going forwards in terms of technology, the, the, our GFX system, which if you saw our last webinar, we talked about a new hygienic grade of, of GFX system, which we're working on with back off at the moment. So there are, there are various solutions, but in terms of, of no holes at all, no, we, what we're simply doing is really, we, we're sort of covering them over with these plastic plugs um, to, to take away those traps. 
what is the minimum size of v-guides okay so within our gv3 range the smallest rail size we do is 12 millimeters so across the v from one side to the other is 12 millimeters wide okay the um the carriage itself uh, is a little bit wild I don't, I don't know the exact figure at the moment it's something like 50 millimeters off the top of my head but um pretty, pretty small can v guide replace lm guide application in machine tool industries like metal cutting chips dust oil coolant how effective is the v guide yes um clearly in those environments the v guide will work perfectly well um the lm guide is, is certainly it has its its merits and its strengths it's it's a very stiff and robust solution and particularly from for machine tools where you've got a, a lot of vibration you know the the increased surface contact may be a benefit in those instances but as we saw from our slate cup, cutting application you know where you've got perhaps moving saws or something it, it's clearly an advantage to have a v-guide solution which which offers that sort of self-cleaning function okay michael belzer uh hi uh i ask you what is the maximum stiffness which we can reach using v guides um uh, when you say maximum stiffness it's a very subjective question but effectively what you're talking about is having a load which is uh, positioned off to the side of the guide rail um, and in that respect the v guide system is quite flexible because the further you space apart the bearings the higher that stiffness you can get so really with a you know sort of single edged heavy duty system you can spread those rails quite far apart and you get an incredible high amount of stiffness okay so it, it's really really application dependent but um you know certainly um you know pro provide us with your your application details we can take a look at it and like i say our, our application knowledge product knowledge is is really sort of unequaled in that respect and we can we can present you a solution that will will really do what you need okay uh great great question by uh powell fario um how is the rigidity of the v system in comparison to recirculating bearings the v system can adapt to adapt to regular surfaces due to the play in the bearings it will not will it not induced low rigidity great question okay pal um so yes with a very um where you where a high degree of rigidity is required then there is some benefit in using a recirculating bearing they are very very stiff but that said the hepco bearing you can actually change the preload of the bearing so for that eccentric adjustability means that you can have a light preload so it's very low friction very smooth very quiet but equally you can rotate the bearing to give you a much stiffer and higher preload okay so it's really quite flexible and adapt adaptable in that respect uh jamie pennington hi alec thanks for the presentation can you give me an indication as to the maximum loads that can be carried by the heavy duty systems so if we're looking at a sort of gantry system I mean, certainly we we've done uh, sort of pick and place gantry systems, uh, sort of four to to five hundred kilograms. I mean, it really really depends on the on on the stroke, how far you're moving and how fast you're moving. But you know, to give you an idea, that that gives you some appreciation of the capacities that we we've done with with sort of X Y Z systems. Okay, uh, Bushin, uh, are these V-guides lubricated or need any external lubrication? Okay, so lubrication, it's, it's a great question. Um, and certainly the V-guide system, the, where, we, where we need or where we like lubrication is between the, the, the running face of the, the bearing. And if I can, I don't know, oh, that's this side. If I, if I point to my bearing there, so the, the, this V-flank, okay, uh, and the, the V-flank on the rail itself is where we, we need the lubrication. Those are the running surfaces. The oil creates a barrier between the two metallic surfaces of the bearing and the slide. Um, and invariably, you know, you, you could be looking at life of sort of up to 30 times longer um, if you use lubrication versus 
running dry. Okay, so you can run it dry. We saw the slate application um, that clearly that there is a benefit in that particular instance to running the system dry. Okay, uh, Nasir is asking, uh, what is the maximum length of the V-guard, V-guard rails you are producing? So the, the straight sections of rails are um, typically manufactured in, in lengths up to four meters. Um, but to, to go longer than this, uh, like I say, we can, we can butt these together to, to create unlimited lengths. So, you know, we, we've, done, we've done systems 40, 50 meters long. Um, but you, you know, the, 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 there really is no limit on this. Which bearings do you recommend to use when running two tracks that are working in parallel? Um, please, when we have some application examples. So um, during the presentation, we, we, we talked about the fact of having two, you know, an installation with two rails running in parallel. Um, and, and you've got a couple of options, depending on the design of the system, you can you can have floating bearings, so that will give you um, sort of plus or minus uh, one point five millimeters of movement, I believe. So about three three millimeters of of actual movement, sort of misalignment for the, the the two rails running in parallel. Or alternatively, you can run a V on one side and a flat track on the other, um, and that really can give you that can give you sort of flexibility of up to about five millimeters. Um, if you've got a um, you know a specific need uh, or installation, then by all means send the details through to us. Uh, our technical team can look at it and we can recommend the best solution for your for your application. Okay, uh, Agostino, uh, how is the eccentric preload managed to avoid premature wear? Great question. Okay, so there there is a setting procedure for our eccentric bearings, and we've got documents that support this. Uh, but effectively, we can we can set the bearings with a low, medium, or high preload. Now, generally, if you if you take a system from Hepco with slide and, and carriage uh, complete, then then we will they we will factory set that slide system to a medium preload. Okay, so you don't have to touch it. You can take that system, install it into your your machine, uh, and it will work perfectly well. Okay, but if you're adjusting yourself, then like, like I say, depends on the application. If it's a, you know, a very uh, smoothness and, and low friction is, is, is what you're really after, then you'd set that a light preload. If it's a, an application where you need greater stiffness, then you'd go for a heavier preload. Okay, but there is, like I say, there's documentation that supports that. Looks like we're, uh, we've, we've pretty much reached the end now. So I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, and really thank you, uh, thank you again for all of you that have, have come along today and participated in this. Um, it's really great to, to show you what we're doing and, and give you some ideas, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, please do, please do come back and, and check out our next webinar, um, which will be announced by our marketing department. And also check out the past one on, on GFX as well. So thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Take care. Stay safe and see you again. Goodbye.